The first step in installing the bracket for our CPU cooler is to remove our stock clips that are each held on with two screws. We're going to get the bag with our IO that says AMD kit, and in it we're going to get a bag with four mounting standoffs, and we're going to screw one of these onto each corner. If you're wanting to install the cooler on an Intel motherboard, it's the Intel kit bag that you're going to want to open. The first thing you're going to want to do is install your backplate, and you're going to use this backplate no matter which socket you have. We've got an LGA 1700 motherboard, so we're going to put all these standoffs to the outer setting. If you've got an LJ1200 motherboard, you're going to want to have them all pulled in towards the middle. So we don't have to use any spacers with the LJ1700, but if you have an LJ1200 motherboard, there's these spacers which are included, which are going to go over here before you insert the backplate into the motherboard. To help the backplate stick to the motherboard, we've got some double-sided adhesive here. All you need to do is pull the paper off. And then you're going to be able to line the backplate up with the motherboard. Then the rest of the process is exactly the same as the AMD motherboard. Just pick the bag of standards that matches up with the socket on your motherboard and screw one onto each corner. We're now ready to start working our I.O. and it's great to see that our two fans have been already installed on the radiator. So one less thing for us to do. And we can see we've got the back side of the fan. So airflow is going to be coming through the radiator this way, which is going to be perfect for us mounting it on the side because we're going to want to have this set to intake for the best temperatures. So in terms of connecting up, all our cables are going to plug into the radiator itself. And you can see we've got three USB Type-C ports, two here and one here. So we're going to plug the cable that comes with our I.O. into this one. And if you want to connect additional height fans, you're going to be able to plug your Nexus link into here. And that's going to allow everything to connect up with just one set of cables going to your motherboard. So this is the cable that comes with our I.O. we need to plug in. So we can line it up and push into place. So we've got three cables coming from this connector. We've got a USB 2.0 cable, which we're going to plug into our motherboard to allow Height software to control the I.O. We've got a PWM cable to plug into our CPU fan header. And then we've got this six pin PCIe cable, which we plug into our power supply to power the I.O. Our tube is covered with a Velcro cover, which we can simply remove. So we take a look at our water block and remove the plastic cover from the back. You'll see that thermal paste is pre-applied. So we'll just leave this on until we install it to prevent it getting damaged. If you're going to be installing this in an Intel motherboard, you're all set because the Intel bracket is pre-applied. I'm going to be installing it in an AMD motherboard, so I just need to pull the Intel bracket out. And then I can take the AMD bracket, slot it into place. And we're ready to just install this in the case. We can then set our I.O. into place on the side of the case. And we'll screw it into place at the back using the short radiator screws. I'm just going to pass all the cables coming from the I.O. through to the back of the case. We've got two USB 2.0 headers down the bottom of the motherboard, so I'll plug our USB cable into one of those. We've got our CPU fan header here at the top of the motherboard, so we'll bring the cable through and get it plugged in. And then we can plug the PCIe cable into the PCIe cable coming from our power supply. Then we can remove the plastic protection from our cold plate, and then we just need to line our I.O. up over the bracket we already installed on the motherboard. And then we've got a nut to go onto each corner. And then we can just tighten things up with a screwdriver. And then we've got some plastic protection to remove from the screen. So to set up our I.O. we're going to need to download Heights Nexus software. You'll find a link to this in the description. And we'll click on Download Nexus. We can click on Open File. Click Yes. We'll click I Agree. Next. Install. And then we can click on Finish. Yes. And Allow. So we've got the option to log in or register. I'm just going to click Continue as a guest for now. We've got some options on this screen you can change if you want. And then you've got the option to enable video backgrounds. I'm just going to leave this on and click on Finish. I'm just going to scan down to the bottom of this and close it. Okay, the first thing I want to do is check for any software updates. We can click on the settings, and we can see that there is an update for our AIO. So I'm just going to click on update. Okay, so now we've got our software up to date. The next thing I want to do is take a look at the cooling. Okay, so we can see all our connections that are made here. So I'm just going to expand the bits that are opened. Okay, so we can see that in terms of the temperature, we've got four temperature inputs coming from our AIO. So we've got our pump temperature in, pump temperature out, and we've got our two fans, and we can see the temperatures of each of these. So it's taking the temperature off the pump temperature in. And then we can see the different fan curves that we have. So there's two different fan curves that are connected up, the performance one 
and the balance one. So we start on the performance curve that we're connected up to. So this is the temperature in that it's working off. This is our fan curve and if we follow it along, it is then controlling our pumps and our AIO has two pumps in it. And we can see at the moment they're currently running at 45% or 2,800 revs per minute because of our pump in temperature. We can see our fans are they're working off the same temperature but they're on the balanced fan curve. Our two fans then are running at 986 revs per minute, about 35%. So say I wanted our two fans to also run off the performance fan curve, what I can do is just disconnect them here and then I can drag another line out to here and one to here. So you can see the speed on our fans is going to pick up as they're now running off the performance curve rather than the balance curve. And likewise, if I want to change the temperature source, I can do that here. So I can click here. Then all I would need to do is drag another line over to what I want the temperature source to come off. And if rather than using the temperatures from our IIO, we can disconnect here. I could use my CPU. So let's go to the temperature and we can select our CPU temperature and drag across to here. So now it's actually taking the CPU temperature rather than the temperature from the AIO. Okay, so let's have a look at the water block. Okay, so you'll notice looking over at our AIO, we've now got the time on it. And then we've got the option to change the clock. So let's go for an analog clock. And we want to change the background, we can do that as well. So let's try something different. It's also possible to add a custom background. I'm going to try uploading a logo. So if I go to pictures, we've got my own logo here. We'll click on it. So we head back to the foreground. Let's see what else we can do. So we've already had a look at the clock and the different options. Let's click on performance. And at the moment, it's displaying our liquid temperature. So we can add something else. Let's click on add. And let's go to CPU. And then we can click here to show what we're actually going to show. So we've got load, temperature, power, and voltage. And there's other factors that are coming soon. So let's just go for our CPU load. And we'll go for the, the total load. So we've got it here, and then we can choose how we want that displayed. So it can be a text, it can be a water level. Um, we've got the cat dog, we've got the void level, and the caterpillar. I, I think I'll try the water level on it. And I think obviously as the CPU load comes up, the water level is going to rise on this. Here we've got options to change our text color accent color, color overlay, and we can drag the foreground opacity down or up, and the background opacity can go the other way as well. Let's try lighting, and if we click on static, I'd like just to set that to static white. And that's changed the whiting of both our logo, and if I turn our screen around for you, we've got lighting on the back of our screen. And we head over to settings. We do have the option to enable hardware mode, so we can click on add. We can upload a video file, click open, and let's click on enable preview. And you can see then the video is now playing on the display.